or welcome or welcome back. In my Discord channel, someone was asking me whether it's possible to create a Webflow tabs component with step indicators like we have above here. So you can see I've used some custom CSS to style the current step text right up here is white, while the other ones are a little bit more gray. And then as we click different tabs, we're filling this step indicator up here. And of course the content is changing. So it's just a little custom CSS in JavaScript that I'm gonna walk you through step by step. We're gonna build it in a Webflow tabs component. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, let's have a look at what's going on here. Here's the Webflow tabs component. You can see we're clicking through and we're getting everything to change, but nothing's actually styling or updating. So let's deal with the steps first because we can target the current class on our tab link. If I open up Navigator here, the first thing I'm gonna want is an embed. So I'll go ahead and drop this embed right at the top and I'll go ahead and paste this CSS right here. Now let's go ahead and explain what's going on. So what's, what we're saying here is we're looking for an element with a class of tab link or any element in this case, and then with a combo class of w dash dash current. Within something with that class, we are then looking for a nested element with a class of tab link underscore text, and we're changing the color, which is the text color to white. So if we look at navigator here, I have tab link w dash dash current. And so oh, let me save and close. If I select this first one, which we know has the current class on it, you see I have tab one selected here and back in the styles panel, we have current. And this current is that w dash dash current that Webflow uses. So this is how we're able to start styling our text. So now it's really easy to just style things within the active um, element. We can also grab one of the tab links that's not active and come down and give it a transition. So we'll set the transition on the text color or the font color down here. Set it to something like 400 milliseconds on an ease. And now we'll get a nice little transition effect as we move through there. Now for the step indicators, we could do the same thing with CSS to style only the active indicator, but in order to style the ones before it, so step two and step one, if we had step three selected in this case, we're gonna need a little bit of JavaScript. And we're gonna use a technique to add and remove classes that have the styles that we want. So let's go ahead and we'll just style one of them and then we'll use JavaScript to target the correct step. So I have progress bar selected here and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a combo class of completed. And then down in the color, I'm going to make it this bright blue. And I'm gonna do the same with progress bubble here. I'm gonna add a combo class of completed and give it a color of this bright blue. Now, if I deselect and then select one that does not have the combo class of completed on it, I can add a transition here as well. So we want to transition the background color and we'll give it 400 milliseconds on an ease. And we're gonna do the same with progress bar too. Come down to our transition. We want to transfer the background color, 400 milliseconds on an ease. And now I'm gonna use code sandbox to write the JavaScript today. So you'll see if within my home section here, I'm loading our code sandbox script with this script tag. Let's also make sure to publish our project so that everything is available for us from our JavaScript. The first thing we wanna do is get references to all of the elements that we're going to modify here. So let's start with the tab links. We use the query selector all method that exists on the document object and we'll pass it our class of tab link. We're also gonna get the bubbles with the class of progress bubble and the bars that all have a class of progress bar. Now, something I should mention is that I'm getting all of the progress bars here and you won't see one on step four, but it is there. I just went ahead and hit it because I, you could delete it, but then you'd have to throw a conditional in your JavaScript. So this way, everything is going to behave the same. I'm just hiding it from view so it will never render and the user won't see it. But this way, we're gonna have the same number of tab links as we have bubbles and the same number of bars. Now let's get into actually making our modifications. We'll start by looping through all the tab links and we're gonna use the for each method to do that. The for each method takes its own function, a callback function, and that function gets referenced to each individual tab link and the index. So in this case, we're expecting four, so we'll have index zero, one, two, and three. Now we're using the fat arrow syntax to define this function. The next thing we wanna do is listen for click events on each tab link. So we're gonna add an event listener and we're gonna add the click event listener. And this also gets its own callback function to run any time a tab link is clicked. We'll start by removing the completed class from all occurrences. This gives us a clean slate that we can work for. And since we have that transition timing, the user's not gonna notice anything. You could optimize this if you wanted, but really not necessary in my opinion. 
Now we'll loop through each of the bubble elements and we will go ahead and access the class list and then we'll remove the completed class from all of our bubbles and we'll do the exact same thing for all of the bars. So these would style them in their like non-current state. Next, we're to find a for loop. And the key here is that we're looping from a value of zero or i equals zero to the value of the index. And the index, again, remember, is the tab index that's being clicked. So if we click step three, we expect that index would equal two. And so we wanna style step zero, one, and two. And so here is where we're going to add the completed class. So we'll call bubbles of i dot class list dot add completed. And we'll do the same thing with bars. And now we can save. And if we come back to our project and refresh, I can click each individual tab and it's gonna add that completed class to each element. If I open up Inspector and come in and look here, let's go ahead and look at progress. We can see that progress bar has completed and progress bubble here has completed. And if I inspected this one down here, it does not have completed. But if I click it, now completed gets added. So there you have it. That's how you can write some custom CSS and JavaScript to make a Webflow tabs component have step indicators. If you found this video helpful, YouTube is about to recommend another one that you'll like as well. So I definitely think you should check that out. And as always, if it helps, please like and subscribe as that helps me. And I'll see you in the next video. Later.